So, uh, today is not an easy uh, topic. Um, it is, you do receive your last assignment. Any assignments after this will simply be uh, a review for the AP exam. As we look at your schedule, the rest. Okay. So. What we want to do is we want to be able to look at 1 over x minus 1 plus 3 over x plus 2. Okay? Before we talk about integration, we need to look at this type of situation. Because if I ask you the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared, what would you tell me? Very good. It's arc tangent of x plus c. Okay? Now, watch what I can do here. If I simply just do this, 1 over 1 minus x squared, Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, we could figure it out after today, but this is remarkably um, more challenging. It requires us to do some thinking with fractions. So I'm just going to show you a little investigation with fractions. 1 over x minus 1 plus 3 over x plus 2. If we were to combine those together, what would we get? We would multiply the top and bottom by x plus 2, right? And we multiply it by x minus 1, right? And you would get x plus 2 plus 3 times x minus 1 all over x squared plus x minus 2. And when you combine like terms, you would get 4x, and then it would be a negative 3 and a positive 2, which would be a minus 1 over x squared plus x minus 2. So here's the deal. That's super challenging to find. That is not so challenging to find. In fact, the antiderivative of this is simply just the natural log of x minus 1 plus 3 natural log of x plus 2 plus a constant. No big deal. But the question is, how do I go from this fraction to this fraction? And that's where we get into a study called partial fra fractions or decomposition of fractions. And we're going to go through that. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. So here's what we're going to do. We don't know how to find the antiderivative. You can set them anywhere you want. We don't know how to find the antiderivative of 1 over x. Oh. Oh, that one's left by Neil's score, if you want to take that one. Oh, that was, that was from a teacher who taught here many years ago. Stops by every once in a while, brings his kid. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they say. You, you, you go to his house, I bet you'll find at least a dozen, dozen lunch trays there. I promise you that. Yeah. All right. I'm going to take 1 over x squared minus 4, and I'm going to turn it into a different fraction because I have no idea how to do that and I derivative. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say I have some number that sits over x plus 2, and I have some number that sits over x minus 2. Um, not necessarily. If we, if we were to combine these together, I would have to multiply a by what? I would take a and multiply it by x minus 2. Plus b times x plus 2. Now, would everybody agree that that would be the numerator? The denominators are now the same, right? The denominators would be both x squared minus 4, so we don't have to worry about the denominator. But that would be the numerator. Yeah. 
if that's the numerator, it has to equal 1. And I'm not just going to put 1. I'm going to put something else there. Would you agree that there's no x's? Because it's just 1. There's no x's up there. So I'm going to put 1x. Let's, <laughs> that was an excellent question. Let us distribute a times x minus 2 times a plus b times x plus 2 times b is equal to 0x plus 1. This is the most critical part that you see and understand this. If you can get this, you're going to be good to go. Those are the, those are the x terms, correct? So that means a plus b must amount to what? Zero. So a plus b must amount to zero. Would you agree that negative 2a and 2b are the constants? So that means negative 2a plus 2b must amount to 1. All of a sudden, I have a system of equations. Could we solve for, could we solve for a and b now? Yeah. Multiply the top through by 2. And I get 2a plus 2b is equal to 0. What do I do? Add them together. 4b is equal to 1. Yes, Michael, b is equal to 1 fourth. If I look at my original equation, it said a plus b is 0. So if b is 1 fourth, what is a? Negative one fourth. If a plus b is zero, when you add these together, you gotta get zero. Yes. Yep. Systems they canceled, right? Okay. Don't. Uh, we did that last year. Uh, get some brain food. Come on back smarter. We'll be ready to go, folks. All right. We all got uh, a equals negative one fourth b is a fourth. Now what we do is we take this integral and we rewrite it. We had the integral of 1 over x squared minus 4 dx. That's what we had. And what we have now in its place is the integral of, I got to make sure I put the, the b and the a in the correct position. So let's look here. It's going to be negative 1 half over x plus 2, right? All right, all right negative 1 fourth. So negative 1 fourth over x plus 2. Plus 1 fourth over x minus 2 dx. I'm going to play just a little trick here. I'm going to, I'm going to factor out a negative 1 fourth. So the, the, the you know, kind of clue is now we got to take care of these constants. You know, you got an improper fraction here, complex fraction. So yeah, it'll be 1 over x plus 2 minus 1 over x minus 2. Yeah, that's an easy antiderivative now. I've negative 1 fourth times the integral, or times uh, the natural log of x plus 2. Minus the natural log of. And it, that's an acceptable answer. Same. Anybody see another, what, what's that? Yeah, I, I won't mark that wrong. Uh, but does anybody see something I can 
do. Yeah, you, you could do that. I'm not going to make you do that, but you, you could do that. We could also take this negative and roll it up there. So it would be to the negative one power. So you could have 1 over 4 natural log of x minus 2 then over x plus 2. You take the reciprocal. So there's a few different ways you could write it. Um, you know, most people just leave it like this. That's that's fine. That's efficient. A lot of times it just depends on what you're using for. But I just want to remind you of the properties of logarithms. We all good there? Okay, so we're going to try a couple more examples. And uh, I've got a worksheet for you that has four problems on it. It's not a packet. There's no staple. I've, I've learned how you guys roll. And I'm Good. Uh, Carter had this set up correctly. Uh, 2x plus 3 over x squared minus 9 is equal to a over x plus 3 plus b over x minus 3. Now, if you chose to put um, a over x minus 3 first, it'll just be that when you do your final answers, a and b will switch places. We should still come up with the same result we got in the question. Um, so that would, that would just result in b coming up negative. See what I'm saying? Okay. All right, so um, I'm going to, you know, multiply and find common denominators. So I've got x plus 3 times x minus 3. So I've got a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 3 is equal to what? 2x plus 3. So I don't have 0x's this time. I have 2x's this time. ax plus bx minus 3a plus 3b over 2x plus 3. So I have my x terms. So if ax plus bx is 2x, that means that a plus b must be equal to 2. So if I add my x terms together, I get 2x. So that means that the coefficients must add to 2. Yep. And then negative 3a plus 3b is equal to 3. Right, I could just divide that bottom one through by 3, couldn't I? So therefore, I have a plus b is 2, and negative a plus b is 1. Add them together. 2b is equal to 3. b is equal to 3 halves. Now, if b is 3 halves, a is 1 half. So I'm going to go back to my original problem, The a is over the x plus 3. So I have the integral of 1 half over x plus 3 plus 3 halves over x minus 3 dx. What could I factor out? A 1 half. One over x plus three plus three over one half times If you 
didn't put the absolute values, I won't mark it wrong on the test. Off our last two questions. Oh. oh, sorry about that. I didn't realize that the paper copied backwards. Sorry about that. Sorry. <laughs> you guys should complain. Like, you should show that to the principal and say, this is not acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> hey, am I <laughs> Do you need a table saw? Pass the penny test. You start the table saw and you stand a penny on edge and it doesn't fall over, does it stay up? Does it move at all? Mine passes the penny test. Yeah, it's setting level. Oh, it's supposed to be a table saw. What kind of table saw are you running? <laughs> all right, here we go. 2 minus x over x squared plus 5x. A over what? B over what? A over X. B over X plus 5. Therefore, we get uh, B times X plus AX plus 5A is equal to what? 2 minus X. So I need two equations since I have two variables. What do I got? B plus A is equal to negative 1. And 5A is equal to dose. It's a negative 1X. So what's B? Negative 7 fifths. Looks like the two fifths goes over the x if I look at my work. So I now have the integral of 2 over 5 over x, which pains me to write that, but minus 7 over 5 over x plus 5. So we factor out a 1 fifth. natural log of x squared put in chips. Minus 7 natural log of x plus 5. You, you can see though that, that, I mean this is entirely new, right? Okay, so wait, just th 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 slow down before we get too far into this. Uh, uh, so uh, Carter is right. Uh, Carter says, you know, this is x uh, minus 3 times x plus 2. So we're going to have a over x minus 3 
uh, plus b over x plus 2, and I say, slow down. No, it's 100% accurate. Just, just watch. <laughs> like, why not, in this situation, why not just do this? What would you call you? So what's du? Do we have a 2x minus 1 dx? We do. So therefore, you have the integral of which is Now, boy, yeah, you guys didn't pay attention for a minute 45. That's all it took. Say no holiday in. Um, so, so there you go. You, you can see that sometimes substitution works just fine. But sometimes you really do need to use integration by parts. Question. Uh, not all the time. Oh, okay. In this situation, substitution worked out just great. If you would have done uh, partial fractions, that would have worked as well. Okay. Um. Yeah, partial fractions is a little bit involved, but uh, it is a good option. No, no. Actually, first hour or the second hour, we solved this and we did partial fractions. We came up with that, and somebody looked at it. They said, "Well." Is it coincidence that the derivative of the bottom, bottom is the same as the top? I said, oh, no, that's because, you know, substitution works. So it um, just kind of works out that way. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's, it, I, I didn't notice it, you know. So, all right, I'll give you guys your worksheet.